In this video, we're going to be tying a little stonefly called the wired stonefly nymph. The first thing I went ahead and did was added a bead to the front of the fly. Then I added some O2O or a 015 lead wire, depending on the, the size you're tying. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to build up a little thread dam right behind that lead wire. That'll transition the wire to the hook shank and also keep the wire from sliding around. And then I'm just going to wrap through the wire a few times just securing it. It doesn't have to be pretty. All it's doing is just securing it. Once I have it mostly covered, I'm just going to take my thread here to the back of the shank. I'm just going to go a little bit ways down the bend there. And uh, now we're ready to tie in our tails. For our tails, we're going to use two little goose biots. And uh, I want to make sure I arrange these biots so that the face, they face away from each other. They have slight curvature, as you can see there, and I want them to splay away. So all I do is I just line them up, splay them away from each other, and I want a tail to be about half of the length of the shank of the hook. I'm just going to place the biots on either side of the shank of the hook and pinch them into place very tight then do one two loose wraps with my thread then I can bite down and I essentially have tied in my tails there then you can trim out your your biots And then you can clean it up. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in the body material, which is going to be some ultra wire. And I'm going to use brassy size here. and I'm going to use two colors. Uh, you can use whatever colors you like. I'm going to tie a black and brown version. So I'm going to use copper and black. Uh, you can use gold and copper. Uh, you can use black and gold. You can tie them in orange varieties, black and orange. You can really do uh, whatever you want. Uh, and for this size, this is a size I think 10. And uh, what we're going to use is some brassy sized wire. If you're tying some of the smaller sizes, you'll want to use small wire. I'm just going to tie both of these pieces of wire in together onto the side of the hook. This will make the fly a little bit wider rather than taller or deeper. I always tie it in on the side. And I'm going to take it all the way back here to the back. I'm going to stop just a couple wraps short from the tail. That will give me a little bit of room for my first wraps with the wire. And you want to do all this very smooth. You want this back taper to be nice and smooth. You need a nice little uh, place for all this wire to lay on. If it's lumpy and uh, uneven, the wire will not lay nice and flat and correct. So if you need to, you can do what I'm doing and just go back and forth a couple times, just kind of cleaning it up and building that nice, smooth, gradual taper. Once you have your taper built, you're going to take your thread to about the one-third or one-quarter point away from the bead or two-thirds of the way forward from the tail. And all we're going to do is we're going to take this wire I'm going to make my first wrap right up against that uh, tail. And then you can take your second wrap and if you need to, in between wraps here, you can kind of scoot the wire together, force it together with your fingernail. Once you kind of get in a groove, it'll all lay correctly, nice and even. And see how nice that segmentation is. Once we get to about two-thirds point, we can trim out the wire and capture it. See some little fuzzies there. I'm just trimming out of there. So I'm going to capture that wire with some nice tight wraps with my thread. And 
Once we have it captured, I can just take the wire, hold tight with my thread, and just spiral each piece out of there. Save your scissors. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in the casing material. This is going to be a thin strip of pheno skin, about an eighth of an inch in width. We're going to tie this right on top of the shank of the hook. And I tie it right up against my wire. Now we're ready to start to dub the thorax. I'm going to take just a small smidgen of SLF brown stone dubbing. Depending on your color you're tying, you can use either the golden stone for tying the golden stone, or you can use the black stone for tying a, a jet black stone fly. All I'm going to do is just take a couple wraps there with a little bit of dubbing. This is just going to act as a prop for my next material which are some goose biots. These goose biots are going to be the the legs of the stonefly. I'm going to take these legs, I'm going to tie them in. I want them to be about half of the length of the body that we just made with the wire. And I usually do this one at a time, but if you're really good and you get them in both at the time both at the same time, you can do that as well. And I just wrap right up to my dubbing, and what that'll do is it'll kind of splay those legs away from the body. Then you can trim out the excess biot. Then I'm going to take my thread right up to those legs and that dubbing. I'm going to take another smidgen of my brownstone dubbing. And it's better to add this just in small little amounts. Once I have that tied in, I'm going to take my thread, pull the casing over, capture that casing with my thread, two wraps on top, and then several wraps below. And what I've done is just made the first little segment there. Then I pull the casing back out of the way and I'm going to repeat the process that we just did on that first little segment. I'm going to do that two more times for a total of uh, three, three little segments. And uh, once you're finished, you can just trim out that pheno skin, give the thread some nice tight little wraps, and uh, then whip finish. And uh, the last part is optional. You can add some little fly finish or some clear cure goo to the tops of the fly if you so desire. The original pattern does not necessarily call for that, but it's a good little addition. That is the wired stonefly nymph. Great little pattern, has a, some nice heft to it, just like a stonefly nymph should. So it sinks nice and good and gets down to where the fish are at. And you can find all the materials to tie this fly on our website, in the If you're watching this via YouTube, there is a link below the video in the description panel. There you can follow that link to our website and there you'll find all the recipe information as well as the materials uh, to tie the fly. And that is the wired stonefly nymph.